Hello everyone, today I'm going to be doing one of my longer videos. I'll be cutting Zeiss 167 High Index Progressive Lenses with the Photofusion Extra Gray and the DuraVision Blue Sapphire, the Sapphire Blue Flash Mirror for the Ray-Ban 3030 Outdoorsman. This is FreePrescriptionLenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. I am the hardest working optician in the industry. My name is Seymour Better, but call me Mo, Mo Better because I'm going to seen Mo Better and look at Mo Better and show everyone else how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses when I cut the lenses for Scott in Fresno, California. But before I begin, I just want to give a shout out to his loving wife, Barbara, and his mother-in-law, Kay. And I have to admit, I don't think I've ever had anyone else give a shout out to a mother-in-law. Good for you, Scott. I've got a great one myself. In fact, I married my wife to get to my mother-in-law. She is such a great cook. <laughs> my wife, eh, you know, but hey, she's got her other strengths. But anyway, today, one of the reasons this is going to take a little bit longer, this can be a tricky frame. We'll have to see. This is, again, the Ray-Ban 3030, the Outdoorsman. It's an aviator with the cable temples. Now, this comes in two colors, gold and black. Today, I'll be working on the black and the 58i size. It only comes in the one size. I'm going to take it out of the original packaging that you will get from Ray-Ban, the cardboard box. Now, the first thing you'll notice, this is a regular Ray-Ban case. They're a little thicker. The Aviators are streamlined frame, so it comes with a skinnier case. That's something unique about this one. More unique features? Well, it's going to come with the regular Ray-Ban cleaning cloth and the booklet that actually should have this frame in here. You know, the icons. There's the Aviator. The shooter, which is similar to that, except there's the place where you can put your cigarette where you're holding it. Hopefully it's in there. It is the Outdoorsman. So, designed to resist the harsh damaging outdoor rays, the Ray-Ban Outdoorsman raised performance and reliability to an unprecedented level and quickly became the first truly universal sunglass model in 1952 as influence moved from the blinding glare of the sun to the immortalizing fashion of the red carpet. Of course, it talks about the rest of them. The icons. Let me put that back in the case so I don't lose it. But it has the classic Ray-Ban aviator shape, but it has the cable temples that wrap around the ear. It has the sweat bar brow. It is flat on this side to stop the sweat from dripping into your eyes. I know people who used to jog in this frame or exercise because it would prevent sweat from getting in your eyes as well as fitting so tight with the cable temples. Now, for those of you who are thinking about getting these and never worn them, if you can imagine a head sitting right here, when you put them on, you literally, you know, pull them over your ear to take them off. You start on one side, you lift up and pull around, and then it will unhook from your left ear. Now, you could do it with the left and then unhook it from the right, but that's how you would wear these frames, or you can just grab both at the same time and pull them off. So it does come with the original G15 lenses, which I'm going to take out. Now I'm going to do a, I'm going to prep this in advance as if there were a semi realness. I'm going to try and trace this. I don't know if it will trace. I may have to use the template as the lens. So again, one of the reasons why this one's taking longer, I'm raising that. I'm putting two dots on the lenses just in case, and I'm raising my head up. So I can have a white background to put black dots versus the black Ray-Ban poster. I can't see putting black dots on that. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and take the lenses out and it's no easy feat. I'm going to get my red tip Phillips screwdriver. Have the tray here to catch the screws. Do a little bit of lefty loosey. Now this has two, eye, well one eye wire screw, one temple hinge screw. I'm going to keep loosening these just enough. And in fact, while I've got the paper towel here, let me put this over here. Anyone else at home who's changing the lens in these, get a baking dish, a glass pan, or metal pan. Get a kitchen towel, t-shirt, anything that will help soften that. Because if you drop the screw, you want to drop it into a soft thing. If this were to hit the counter, it'd bounce on the floor. This could easily still bounce out of the tray. So I have a cushion. I'm going to try and pop the lens out. Come on out, come on out. There you go. Oop, and then everything came apart. So what I'm going to do is, I'll tell you what, I'm going to do all this while we're working on it. Let's just see one thing. Let's see one thing. 
I'm going to tighten that eye wire screw back. And uh, let's go ahead and. Oh, getting dangerous here. I'm going to put the that back in there. Let me grab some extra tools. Not the easiest frame to work on. I've got a gripping pair of tool and well as a gripping Phillips head screwdriver. Although I like using this one better. Whoa, see I dropped the screw. It landed on something soft. Scott, I'm charging you extra for this video. <laughs> it's right, I'm gonna work for you because hey, I owe you that. This frame took forever and a day to come in from Ray-Ban. So he's been waiting on me. So I owe him that. One way to get the, the thing lined up, I use a thumbtack to get the screw lined up. We're going to put that one back in there, or the screw hole. Then again, the Phillips head. Now we're one side in. Let's do that again. The frame's so nice, I have to unscrew it twice. Come on, Allie, you're not coming easy, so let's loosen some more. Come on out without a fight. Ah, don't come apart, don't come apart. Yes, I always talk to inanimate objects. Ray-Ban did not consult with me in 1952 before making this frame. I would have given them some tips. Okay, so now that's apart. Let's see if this can be traced. Usually the aviators are such a thin metal. It actually doesn't register as being a frame in here, but I'm going to assign a barcode number to it. 3875. He's a secret agent. 3875. So I'm going to put the frame into the tracing element of the blocker and hit start and silas is going to pop up and if we're lucky nope it's so thin it's thinking it's tracing a semi realness okay let's go to plan b that's the reason why i put those two dots on there i've done this enough to know mostly with the aviator frame i'm going to trace this as if it was a semi realness meaning where there's just a string at the bottom even though this is not semi realness but that's the reason why I put the two dots on there. We'll pull the sticker away. Again, raise my head up to have that white background. And there's a line on this graph. Those two dots are going to go straight across. And here's a funny tell of mine. I always get quiet when I concentrate. And I talk so much in my videos, you're going to say that you never concentrate. And you would have a valid point. Okay, we're going to press that on there firmly. Place that tool in there. Now we're going to trace just the right lens and hit start. It's going to ask me what the bridge is. Since it's only tracing one, it's 14 millimeters, so we're going to do that. Come on. What are we doing? Come on now. Come on, work with me, work with me. Right lens. So the it's tracing the circumference of the right lens again it's asking for the bridge size which is 14 although let me that's what the frame says let me measure myself and it is so we hit the check mark here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality you get to see me struggle in this video there's a few of them out there but don't worry i won't go on a rant well, I can't promise that. Let's see how the rest of the video goes. But I have to enter his pupillary distance of 31. We're going to enter that. The optical center height, I've got it 29. So we're going to do that. These are progressive lenses. Now, I've already got them blocked. Well, not blocked, but I've already had them dotted up. This is the right lens. Reads minus 4 and a quarter, minus 1 at 120. Minus 4 and a quarter, minus 1 at 120 with a 175 add power. 
This is the right Progressive Light D18 Photofusion 167 High Index Extra Gray with the DuraVision Mirror Flash Sapphire. So I'm going to take the lens out of the packet. You know me from my videos, I always like to highlight that so you know you're getting the manufacturer's original packaging. And so this is a block. I need to attach this to your lens while it is cutting. I need two double-sided adhesive stickers of which I've got them here. The black side is the sticky side. I'm going to stick this one onto the first block. Do the same thing now for the second one. Place that onto the platform. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. That silver button on the back is a magnet. It's going to do its job twice. The first time it's going to attach itself to another magnet there. We're going to get everything laid out. Again, I'll get quiet as I concentrate. And make sure the lens is large enough to fit, and it is. Hit that button, the arm's going to come down and place the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing now for the left lens. Left Progressive Zeiss Light D18 Photofusion 167 Extra Active Gray with the flash mirror, minus four, minus one at 66, minus four, minus one at 66. Take the lens out, place it on the platform. Let's go ahead and highlight all of that. The reason why I highlight that is so when you get these in the mail, you will see exactly what I've done. And if you guys missed any of that, let me recap. Oh, I know it's a bad joke, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. So, and again, hang on, hang on, hang on. Not just these packets, but you get something for your own medical records from Zeiss. This is what I love about Zeiss. They document everything. So the next time you go to the doctor and they ask what you're wearing, hand them this and say, Doc, I'm wearing the Zeiss Progressive Light D. The D stands for Digital Freeform Progressive. The right eye, minus four and a quarter, minus one at 120 with a 175 add. The left, minus four, minus one at 66 with a 175 add. My right pupillary distance, 31, the left 30.5. Actually, I haven't even gotten there. Oh, I did. Um, the, the fitting height, 29. We've got the 29 there, the 30.5 for the PD, 30.5, 29 for the fitting height and the base curve of the lens and it's got all the freeform digital information that anyone at your doctor's office can lay the lens out and read the powers off of that's not where that goes that's where that goes so pull the paper away make the black side sticky we're going to line up the magnet pd is set optical center height is set see a little extra thing on the lens make sure it doesn't throw me off with the dots Get everything laid out as such and make sure the lens is large enough and it is hit that button the arm's going to come down place the block onto the left lens now all that's done that's the tracer that's the blocker this is the edger this is what's going to edge your lenses down from this size to this size it's going to do it on this cutting wheel which is going to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center is going to put the V-shaped bevel on the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. So I'm going to wake up the computer, essentially transfer the data from here. Job ID number 3875. Now I'm glad I caught that. It was just traced as a semi-rimless where it wants to cut a groove. We're going to put the metal bevel on there. We're going to pick the lens material of high index so this is going to stink while it's cutting. I'm not going to put a polish on the lens. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front, even though I'm going to manually do it. And I'm going to put a heavier bevel on the back of the lens. I'm going to press the sticker on there firmly, place the magnet into the chuck, or as I like to call it, the Charles, because you just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. Hit the green start button. The door closes. I know, secret agent 2840. I need to clean the door. But uh, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the frame on the first go around. And actually, let me see something here. Let's do something here. Unique. I'm going to do this manually. I'm going to override the bevel. And I'm going to tell it where to place the bevel since this is such a thin metal frame. I am a licensed optician. On a good day, I'm smarter than the machine, and this is a good day. So I'm going to tell it where to place the bevel. Okay. 
So let's just see. Manually wants to put it there. Let's move this to the front. Five millimeters from that. Let's go about All right, I'm going to make a note. I'm cutting this on front 1.3. Cut at 1.3 millimeter front bevel. And I always write these in red, so if I ever need to cut lenses again in the future, I'll know exactly what I did on this one. I'm going to hit the start button. The cutting wheel starts up. Now, in most videos, you don't see water spraying in this one because it is high index. There you go. Water is spraying onto the lens. Polycarbonate cuts dry where plastic, high index plastic, and Trivex cut wet. Ooh, and it already stinks. Now there is sulfur in your lens which is being released. And it smells like, well, sulfur or rotten eggs. Not as good as a lit match, but you know, we all know how good that smells. but it's cutting it down. Now, high index polycarbonate is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. High index is 30% thinner and lighter than plastic, I mean polycarbonate. So essentially these are 70% thinner than the original plastic lenses. Of course, the original lenses were glass back in 1952 and then the 70s and 80s, people started using plastic for the safety feature and making it lighter weight. That's the thing about glass. If you drop it, it shatters like a glass will do. So now it's measuring again. It's about to go down onto the bevel wheel to get the V-shaped bevel. Which you can't see because of my dirty door. The Secret Agent 2840 is no doubt going to comment on because he has a keen eye because I made glasses for him. Hang on a second, my website developer Jigsaw is calling. Hello, thank you for calling WFPL. You're on the air with Seymour Better. Cutting some lenses for Scott in Fresno, California. Finally. <laughs> I know, isn't it? He always updates and lets people know when things have been shipped and this has taken a minute because the frames have been coming from the Italian warehouse. But I will call you back and let you know that um, I interviewed somebody today to help out and I'll call you back and let you know how the interview went. Sounds great. All right, I'll give you a call on my way home. Thanks a lot for calling, Jigsaw. You are welcome that I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. Jigsaw is a great guy. I always update him when I ship so he can send out a little confirmation that uh, the order has been completed. You're allowed to, if you set up a, a, what is it called, profile, you can actually write a review on all my products that I ship. So in just a moment, I'll open this door with my mind. I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I know, I just have to stare at it. But I'm, here's something you never see, a second paper towel, because... I, wanna, I don't want to take that one out. I'm going to need that. I'm going to dry everything off. I want to do a very, very light safety bevel on the front of the lens. This is essentially just like the cutting wheel, complete with a little groove if I need to take it down smaller. But very lightly, I want to put a light safety bevel on the front of the lens. It actually tempers and hardens the lens with, with the pros come the cons. I can get the lenses thinner, but this is not an unbreakable material. So I do that to prevent the edges from chipping or flaking should they hit a hard surface. Now, hopefully the force is with me and I can take this apart without losing screws. And if you notice, I try and keep the frame upright so the screws don't fall out like that. Because I do not want to crawl around on the floor. Now the other thing about the outdoorsman, because of that bar that has that little extra lip, that little clip, now it is away from the lens, but I want to slip it in underneath that. 
and should I ever cut lenses for anyone else, lenses only, and mail them to you, you're going to have to be aware of that as you mount and install in here. So, I want to check, tell you what, before that is in there, let's go one step further. I could feel just a little bit of a sharp edge. I want to put a little bit more of a bevel on that even though the machine has already done that. Smooth that out even more. Should it ever come in contact with the face, it'll be nice and smooth. Okay, that's good. You want a licensed optician like me with I've personally cut tens of thousands of pairs of glasses. Not a whole lot of this particular model, but a lot of the lessons learned can be a, from other frames can be applied to this one. And you want to see the problem before you encounter it. So I could close it down, make sure everything's fitting, then take it all back apart to do that safety bevel, but I wanted to do it before it was locked into place. Now, any optician at home watching this is going to say this is bad form and you would be right. You don't want to tighten the screws here because if the screwdriver slips you're going to stab yourself in the finger. Every optician has a callus here from all the numerous times you've done that. So I'm going to get it started and then come down here to my rubber stopper and man, trying to tighten a black screw in a black frame is a hyper rope presby rope on top of that and that is good. We're in there really well. So, we're going to flip this over to L. Place the magnet into the Chuck, the Charles, the Chucky baby. Or tonight I'm calling it the Barbara and the K. Hit the green start button. The door closes. The clamp's going to shut. The lens is going to be traced by the two wide styluses again, making sure that it's large enough to fit into the left side of the frame on the first go round. And you can see as it's tracing the shape of the lens measuring the thickness and then it's going to pause and wait my orders my instructions on where to place the bevel and I'm going to keep it on the same thing it's just telling me how many millimeters that number changes as I move this around telling me the thickness of the lens I think that'll work now Scott is his prescription is slightly higher than average. His lenses are thin in the center, thick at the edges. So the further you go from the center of the lenses, the thicker the lens will be. And so anything teardrop shaped like this will uh, exemplify that. But that's why he wanted to go with the high index. I'm going to take this block off. Pull the sticker away. Add to my sticker collection. I'm going to come down here to the lensometer start the process known as final inspection turn the axis wheel to 120 and actually I had to lower this earlier because the person I was interviewing I was showing them how this works they have no experience I'm going to train that person so to make them exactly how I want but she's a little shorter than me so I showed her that it can drop down if she needs to use that let me raise this back up for myself it's on 120, we're gonna put it in over the black dot, read the power, and we are getting minus four and a quarter. Going away from four towards five, we stop at that first tick mark, because that is four and a quarter, 450, 475, five. That's because Scott's prescription, minus four and a quarter, he's on the 25th rung of a ladder. Everything goes in four, I mean, four quarters to a diopter. So, 16, 17 steps of correction, excuse me, of far-sided correction now. Once ever the image is the correct size, he has a full diopter, one full diopter, another four steps of astigmatism correction. So he has 15 steps, excuse me, 17 steps. I have math wrong. You know, I'm, I'm going to say it again. I have failed math so many times I can't even count. So he's on the 17th rung of a ladder this way. He's in another four steps, taking him to 21, 90 degrees away, and it's how we rotate those two curves. One curvature this way, one curvature this way, which is steeper. And we're gonna read that second power. And we're gonna get minus five and a quarter because you add the minus one to the minus four and a quarter to get five and a quarter. Now his left eye, he only needs 16 steps, four full diopters, 
of astigmatism correction, excuse me, of farsighted correction, another full diopter here. Now he has an add, means in addition to what's on top. Now, because he's a minus in the left eye, minus four, he has built in two and a quarter diopters of reading power. He can take his glasses off and see great here. With the glasses on, he's gonna see better here. So it's gonna change the focal length of where he can adjust and hold things. So, his final power will be five for the left eye, final power is five and a quarter for the right. Now, there, there are no minus reading glasses because minus people can take their glasses off and see up close. They are blessed to be able to do that. He is known as a myope. I am the opposite. I am a hyperope. I can see better the farther away it is than up close. That's why I was struggling trying to tighten a black screw in a black frame. All right, let's go ahead and do the safety bevel. Let's do, this actually feels smoother than the first one, but I still want to go ahead and give it a little bit more of a pronounced bevel. Wipe all the optical sawdust off the lens. Yeah, that feels good. Let's go ahead and well, we're going to come down here, do a little bit of lefty loosey. Tuck, I have the side I'm working on closest to me. I'm going to tuck it in underneath that clip. Hold my tongue just right so the screws don't fall out. And you see I'm placing my finger against the screws. So if they're tempted to pop out, I'm not going to let them. I would never want to do this so many years ago when they only had the glass lenses. Because they could chip or flake. Well, this one does not want to go in there. So, again, I'm going to tighten this screw against my finger using bad form. I'll take the bad form. Come down here, use that little rubber stopper. First, I'm going to tighten the eye wire screw. Then, I'm going to tighten the hinge screw. Not too tight. I want these to be able to open and close easily. And go ahead and once I'm sure that this has been closed tightly, I'm going to take this block off, pull the sticker away, add that back to its slot. My sticker collection. We're going to come down here to the lensometer, spin the axis wheel to 66, which corresponds with the axis of his left eye, minus 4, minus 1 at 66, minus 4, minus 1 at 66, all that documentation. You didn't get that enough? Minus 4, minus 1 at 66. Yeah, you got it now. Read the power over the black dot, and I'm getting minus four look at that exactly halfway between three and five that's where you're going to find four now here's another full diopter of astigmatism correction i want to verify and we're at five so that is perfect now the last steps of final inspection is to measure the pupillary distance 31 and 30.5 is 61.5 optical center height of 29 turn the card around so you can see Place my thumb against, or the PD stick against my thumb on the right lens. When we hold it up to the left lens, we're getting 61.5, so that is perfect. Now, not to the space directly below the lens, but to the deepest point. We want to get 29 millimeters, and that's where we're at. 29 millimeters, so that is cut perfectly. Now, normally I'd get these in standard alignment but again it is because these two points are touching the three point stance one two the bottom of the frame being three and the other thing with these cable temples they can be adjusted so they curve inwards more to fit the contour of your head some people don't like them close in you can push them outward but that's something you can adjust yourself these are even adjustable where you can loosen the pressure and over time these will open up you can crimp them down this is a coiled spring so you can crimp that down to tighten it up yourself 
Now this is the portion every video that as I clean your lenses I mentioned there's free shipping anywhere in the US and Fresno, California is still in the US. But when you get these in the mail there's a small chance these will not that they would fit too loose or too tight but it could be high because these are almost self adjusting one side is going to be higher 80 percent chance that one side is higher than the other that's because 80 percent of people have one ear higher than the other and i'm no different and i'll show you that i'm part of the 80 percent in just a moment but i would do want to make sure again they're in standard alignment this way i'm going to flip them over standard alignment close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly and they do and that's the thing about the aviators they do touch on the lens there with certain prescriptions that's unavoidable but it will still fit in the case now this is what your lenses look like clear well without my smudges on them let me clean them one more time and i'm going to use your premium microfiber cleaning cloth so that's way you know whether these work or not i field tested every cloth before i ship it so when you get these in the mail scott and you see a wrinkle in it you know that it works you don't want me to reach in my pocket and use my cloth do you Okay, so I send out a self-request. I'd actually love to have two of them, Scott. One with you indoors with these clear, one with you outside showing the blue flash mirror that I'm about to show you. This is what they look like indoors. Now, the nice thing about the flash mirror, you get all the protection in one lens. It has its own back surface anti-glare coating, which looks like, well, the flash mirror looks like a blue anti-glare on steroids. And the back of the lens looks the same way. You see that blue reflection from the mirror. However, once these are activated, you're going to see the green of the DuraVision Sun. Zeiss uses their premium back surface sunglass. What they put on their uh, polarized and mirrored lenses is the DuraVision Sun back surface anti-glare. So you have the mirror on the front, the anti-glare on the back. Of course, you have... 50 to 70 percent blue light protection built into these lenses because of the photofusion extra gray but as you can see it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for the lenses to turn dark a little bit longer when you come back inside 45 seconds to a minute minute 15 now this is important scott and everyone else watching all photochromic lenses will turn dark on day one and continue to darken every day for the first couple weeks or exposed to the sun after that, they'll work for years at maximum performance. The only time they won't work is if you're behind the windshield of your car. Your windshield absorbs the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack from sitting in the sun, and that's why they don't turn dark in a car. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they will darken. Having said that, these Photofusion Extra Gray lenses will get 30 to 50% dark behind a windshield. Now, you see that really nice, beautiful blue mirror finish. Now... When Scott looks out of them, he's going to see the extra dark gray lens. When people look at him, they're going to see the blue mirror. And while these are activated, now you can see the color differential of the green, the green hue of the DuraVision Sun back surface anti-glare. Now, one other element I want to talk about with photochromic lenses, they will get darker when it's 85 and below than they will when it's 95 and above but i remind everyone when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody or nothing works 100 percent when it's 100 degrees outside we all work much better when it cools off now having said that the photofusion extra gray will get darker in hotter weather it's designed for extra active people who spend extra amounts of time outside so if you live in a hot climate or you want the darkest lens possible go with the Zeiss Photofusion Extra Gray. Now, the mirror comes in five choices, silver, gold, green, blue, and red. But you can also get any of there. If you don't want a mirror coating, you can get any of the front and back surface anti-glare coatings. Now, you can't get um, a DuraVision anti-glare coating on the front of these because it comes with a flash mirror. The mirror is slick as glass and the anti-glare won't adhere. So that's why they put it on the back surface. Now, as I keep talking, these will lighten up. But if you have any questions, go to the Contact Me page of the website. While you're on the website, scroll down to the bottom of the page and sign up for our email newsletter. That's where I'm going to have promotions and specials running. That's the only place you're going to be able to find them. Hopefully, soon enough, Jigsaw, once a month, will run certain promotions on certain lenses or certain frames where you can get a discount on them, I guess with a code that he will provide to you in an email that you can enter onto the website code when checking out. Of course, you can always email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. You can also leave a question in the comment section below. 
but Scott in Fresno, California, you're going to have to look good in front of your wife Barbara and your mother-in-law Kay, but you probably already do that well and you make it look easy. Um, oh man, Scott does have the life. We've been talking back and forth and uh, man, I'm envious of him on how he gets to live his life, certain aspects of it. In my younger days, I would have really, really <laughs> loved to hang out with him. We would have shared some great times together, talked about some great stuff. But uh, he's in California. I'm in North Carolina. I'm having to work, and so I can't, uh, can't hang out like I would. But I wish I could personally deliver these to every person who buys. But again, Scott in Fresno, California, thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 3030 the outdoorsman let me spin that around and the color is the l9500 black and of course there's the arista gold and i'll put a link in the description below for anyone who wants a link to this frame it only comes in one eye size the 58 and you can try on the ray-ban 3025 aviator that comes in a 58 eye size it also comes in a smaller 55 as well as the windshield in a 62 as i call it but that way you'll know whether you want this size. The comes in the two colors, gold and black, for around uh, roughly around $160, $161. Of course, you'll get one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses. The upgrade to the Zeiss Photo Fusion Extra Gray is, is $129. The blue sapphire blue flash mirror is $69. Of course, the upgrade to 167 high index is, is $58. And how much was all of this? Let's find out. I can do this. Let's just say. The frame is 161, the Zeiss Progressive 149, the 167 upgrade is 58, the Photo Fusion Extra Gray is 129, and the Flash Mirror, the Sapphire Blue Flash Mirror is 69. Let's just see, let's math, shall we? 161 plus 149 plus 58 plus 129 plus 69 is a total of 566 tax free with free shipping anywhere in the US. I'm in North Carolina. North Carolina considers eyeglasses a medical device so there's no tax collected on medical devices. That's how I'm able to remain tax free. Although so many people selling on the internet do have to charge tax because they're not in North Carolina. My regular sales tax is 7.5 percent. So if he were to buy these in North Carolina he'd have to pay another 42 I mean in his home state Another forty-two, forty-five, but that's money he gets to keep in his pocket so he can take his wife Barbara and mother-in-law Kay out to dinner on that. Now again, he got the Progressive. For those of you paying single vision, you won't be paying the 149 For those of you who prescription can work in polycarbonate, you won't have to pay the 58 making everything much, much cheaper. But just email me if you have a question on prices. And of course, I'll put the link in the description below so you can click on that and type in your own things and your own features you want to find out how much everything will be. And did I mention free shipping anywhere in the U.S.? I think I did. So again, Scott in Fresno, thank you so much for the purchase of the Ray-Ban 3030 Outdoorsman with your Zeiss Light D digital freeform progressive lenses and the 167 high index material with the Zeiss Photo Fusion Extra Gray and the Sapphire Blue Flash Mirror. And I know this was a long video, but hopefully everyone else has gotten a chance to see how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.